to have the ceiling be placed, tile to place, uh, 11 times. And it's a big thing for me because I like my privacy. Also, I don't really like Casey. I'm just being honest. Let's be honest about the earth. Let's be honest about the earth and the world. The world and they that dwell therein. I'm on earth, she is in the world, in my mind. I don't really like Casey. I think she does some things that are very um, demonish. I don't think she's a demon. I just think that she does some things that are demonish. So having her here in my apartment was hard for me. And having Mr. Jeff here every week. And having Mr. Slappy here coming here all hours of the day and night. It was stressful. Could it be that I don't like that? That's not that I don't like Casey. I do like Casey. Y'all even know where I was going. Could it be that I do like plumbers, which I do, because I like talking to them. I, I I took pictures of what they were doing. I like talking talking to them. And Mr. Jeff, the handyman, I like talking to him too. They were company for me. Could it be that I really like Lindsay? But I killed it myself with my mouth. But in the beginning, I called her an ogre. I said, you stop like an ogre. Tell that ogre to stop stomping. So every time I thought of her at that point, I started seeing Shrek. And Shrek is not pretty. Where's Shrek get the horns from? Do we clean out his ears? I don't think he has, he has ears, but he also has horns. I don't like that. Because if you get waxy build up in your ears, you get waxy build up in your horns. And it's pointed at the sun. So you know it's sweat in there too. You want to get um, you get horny build up or not horny like like the horns build up. It's not your horn. There's some sweat from the sun and the, the, the nastiness. That's my thought of her. Even though it's a small problem, big problem, not and then has a lot of problems and problems every day with her. But I see her like grace. I saw her through horns. I see her uh, through grace. I saw her through Shrek. I didn't even, I, I, she looked green. She looked like an ogre. She has a boxy shape anyway. And when she walks, she don't move her shoulders. But she can be pretty. And I, at the wall, I started walking around. I said, why can I not see anything pretty in her? And I was, I, was, I was seeing pretty things in Casey. But then when she started trying to make me lie on Lindsay and do things like that, I started not seeing any pretty things pretty in her. And then lies and it's just too much. I said, well, my problem is not Casey. And my problem is not Lindsay. My problem is my mouth. Because if I stop saying, shut up, you old girl. Sit down somewhere, you old girl. You know, I, 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 these things are not a God. I said, well, why can't I see her in a loving manner? Because I do not look at her and call her love. I call her ogre. I don't look at Casey and call her love. I call her lie. Is there any truth to what I said about the two of them? Absolutely. From my perspective, it's all true. But it's the truth. The scary thing about that is that I can believe, I can convince myself with my mouth of something. I'm that powerful. I can convince myself with my mouth that something's true. And I walk in it. Casey's a liar and Lizzie's over. Is that true? Yes. I've experienced Casey's lies. A lot of them. I've experienced Lizzie's overness. A lot of it. Is Lizzie an ogre? No. Is Casey a liar? No. Does she lie? Yes. Does Lizzie ogre? Yes. Am I annoying? Yes. I'm cute, right? I'm still annoying. If you, you, if you want to deal with that that day, I'm annoying. <laughs> the harmony can be around anybody any day. I, you cannot. Everybody can stomach me any day. Sometimes I'm sick, and so I'm, I'm like grouchy. So I become grouchy and annoying. I'm trying to cover it up more often than not. I'm trying to cover the fact I'm sick and the pain. So I, I, I become grouchy and annoying. And some days I'm just annoying. Is she a liar? Yes. Is she an ogre? Yes. Am I annoying? Yes. For all of those things, am I annoying? No. Is she an ogre? No. 
Is she a liar? No, a thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But she said, I have come that you may have life, and you may have life more abundantly. Casey's not a liar. Did Casey steal from me? Yes. Casey's not a thief. The thief. Done. There's only one thief. Did that person steal something from you? Yes. They acted in that part. Are they that? It says, for it is by grace you are saved. So who's Lindsay for me? Grace. Who's Casey for me? Grace. There are pictures of opportunities for me to show God's grace. Now that they, they, they are an opportunity for you. Take advantage of it. Chris Tucker looked at him and said, take advantage, man. Take advantage. You don't want to take advantage. I'm taking advantage of Lindsay. And Casey, I'm taking advantage of both of them. I'm taking advantage of my opportunity to see them differently. You act out the part of liar and thief. But you are grace. You act out the part of ogre. And initiator and sneak and manipulator. But you are grace to me. I think the point behind what Pastor David was saying was the he said you have to forgive Jamie. I said, uh, forgive? He said, yeah, Lindsay, you have to forgive her. He's never done that before. He's never even mentioned knowing Lindsay or knowing anything about her. And he came out of nowhere and said, I have to forgive her. I said, that, that, that's God. I know when I hear God, that's God. He's not going to say anything to me unless it's God given anyway. He's just not. That's just his personality. But we said, you have to forgive her. I said, wait a minute, I thought I was forgiving her. He said, Jamie, do you realize what you call her? The tenant. Many names matter. I call her the tenant. That's disgusting. When he brought it to my attention, I was like, oh, I may want to barf. I noticed it when Casey said, I can't wait till apartment A3 and apartment A4 is empty. And I was like, wait, what, what does that mean? I was already asleep because she was trying to get me to answer a question I should not be answering about tw about four months after. She was asking me at the eighth month mark about what I would do at the 12 month mark. And how I would feel about living there. Because she wanted to get a definite yes. Even though Lindsay was tormenting me. She was asking in the midst of the torment what I would do. And she was asking me at night. <laughs> the thief cometh. And she said, you don't have to answer. I don't have to have no answer from you. I don't get insulted by that. I don't have to have an answer from you. I can't wait to apartment A3 and apartment A4 are empty. God says she's salty. <laughs> she, he said that you are upset because what happens was happening um, to you there, but she's thirsty because she has no God for herself and money. And she's become salty because she wants to live off the of God. She wants to live off of the God in you, and it's not happening. Why can't I get to my fill off of Jane? She was worshiping me, waiting for me to, to, to endow her with mercy and kindness and grace to live her life. The problem is you're looking to get something from me that I was never meant to give you. So my, my, my application was great. I'm an artist. I'm a poet. Still am a poet. That will not, that will not die. That ain't going nowhere. I have many, many gifts. Yes, I do. God saw over my eyes. He's like, Jamie, you're not looking at this gift thing right. Ain't there you, you could use to serve me with and bear fruit for me? It's a gift. You could use, but not apart from me, you can't do nothing. You can't do it by yourself. So if, you, if you're doing these things and you're doing them because you have me and with me, it is a gift. I love that. The fact that my artists don't depend on me. I love that. But people see that, right? And they think artist, poet, no, 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 no. she's been in museums and no, 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 no. Yes, I have. But at the same time, I'm human. But people hear about those things and they see these things. She's a blogger too. And they think that you are the God that they need. And you turn out to not be the God that they need, right? So even in the chat boxes, they'll say, oh no, don't say Jesus to me. Yes, you got it. You got it. Bust it, sweetie. You mean don't, 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 don't turn your ears off to what I'm saying? Because my mouth is not, my mouth was not dedicated or baptized or prayed over or anointed by you. You did not die for me. I say what I want. 
I stand on that. I say what I want. All the time. I say what I want. I get in trouble and I still do it. I say what I want. I'm a poet. I can't let you put words in my mouth. You are not Jesus. That's antichristy. That's antichristy. That's right. You're going to go on from being thirsty to salty to antichristy. Back up, sweetie. You're going too far. You done went too far. Because thirsty and salty are about you, right? Thirsty and salty are about you and what you feel you have not gotten from God and gotten from the world. But once you start being antichristy to me, that's a problem. Huh? It's not a problem for me because I'm still going to say what I want to. It's a problem for heaven. You know that? You don't want to battle me. Blah, blah, and heaven. Blah, 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 blah. You lose your legs. I said, I gotta slow this thing down. Cause when I look at her, I must, she, uh, you're not gonna tell me what to say. But when I look at her, I must see God's child. I'm a child of God, but she's God's child. There has to be a difference. I don't even like the fact that there's a difference, but there has to be a difference because I cannot go to her and say, God is good. And her answer, all the time. And, then I, and I say, all the time. I did the pastor Tim. He was like, all the time. <laughs> If I did the pastor David, definitely, bet you. And if any Christian has heard that, Ms. Andrea, sweetest, most sweetest person, piece of candy. I, I, I bet you if I go to her and say, God is good, she'll be like, all the time. <laughs> but if you can't respond to me, oh, the harmony of our neck, and I say, God is good, she will say, all the time. <laughs> Her and David Lewis, they were both Pentecostal. Don't play. Don't play with Lewis. He told me, he's like, Jay, not just one organ. I'm going to be like, no, 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 She can't answer me. But she got upset because she was walking around in, in, in this apartment. I was walking around just doing stuff. And she said, oh, glory to God. And I just looked at her. It was just so weird and off time. Holy Spirit said, Jamie, don't. I said, I said, Holy Spirit, I wanted to dig it. He said, you can't because it, was, it, was, it wasn't for you. It wasn't for me. It was for her and for you. He said, remember the story with Paul, right? The inner prison story. Do you know why Paul was in the inner prison? Because he cast a, 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 a spirit of divination out of a girl. See, that's why you gotta be careful. I to, you have the spirit of discernment of spirits. I'm sorry, you have the gift of discernment of spirits, right? So you do not have the gift of discernment. Because the gift of discernment is a curse. The gift of discernment is the spe- a spirit of divination, right? So he's walking behind a little girl, or the, the little girl was walking behind them, huh? um, Paul and Silas, and she said, this is Paul, this is Paul. Was what she was saying true? Yes. See, this is why we get into this. Because word by Pastor David said, words matter. Well, what that girl speaking the tr- speaking true things? Yes. Everything she said was true. Paul swiftly turned around and cast the spirit out of her. Why? That is what's supposed to be there. We're walking around, right? And I'm in my house sometimes, right? And I feel free to just start praising God. Or well, I'm listening, doing a blog, and I will enter, I will enter a praise while I'm doing a blog at certain times. But when I am not kidding about that, I'm, if I like, this is when I think of the goodness of Jesus to all these stuff for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Check this out. Pastor Tim has come here many times. Pastor David's been here once. I think he's maybe, maybe twice. I don't know. But Pastor Tim has been here many, 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 many times. Right here. He might as well move in. He comes here. I mean, when he came here with Pastor David, I was sick. They brought me from the hospital. When he came here with Pastor David, the funny thing was, uh, he was Pastor David came in and said, okay, and I sat in my chair. He's like, yeah, sit in your chair. I sat in my chair. He's like, here's your um, cord and everything. He started getting everything together for me, right? And then Pastor David just started walking down the hallway. I'm, I'm sorry, Pastor Tim just started walking down the hallway. He's like, Jeremy, getting you some water and some fruit. And so, <laughs> and it was nighttime. That's until we sleep because he says, I'm sleep and I'm wearing the city because I normally sleep in the city and Miss Karen don't know, so don't tell her hoodie. <laughs> it was, it was pretty, but it wasn't, it's not Pastor Tim. So <laughs> he's scared to start walking down the hallway. And the funny thing was, Pastor David joined him, started walking down the hallway too. 
Because he, he, never, he didn't, he, he wasn't looking for somebody that left here to take him, right, down the hallway because uh, I was sitting in the chair. He had just gotten acquainted and sat in the chair, right? So, I don't know, but, 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 so he, but he knew Pastor Tim knew his way around. So Pastor Tim said, well, not, Pastor Tim did not, Pastor Tim did not break. We came in, I walked in, I immediately turned to the left and, and swapped in my chair. And I swapped my chair so hard that my neck kind of snapped a little bit. So I was like sitting with my neck. My my, my 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 collarbone in the seat of the chair. I was just tired and I was sick. It didn't hurt. I'm just you know. And Pastor David followed me. Came right, sat, sat some stuff with me, the like uh, sexual stuff. But as as swiftly and as smoothly as we went to the chair, that's how swiftly and smoothly Pastor Tim walked to the uh, kitchen. He knows his way. Hmm. As much as Pastor Tim is here and knows his way around here. And he came in his house one day, and we're talking about, because he's coming out and move. So he came in his house one day, he, he likes stuff like that. I want to do stuff before he got here. He likes it. I don't, uh, I don't understand him. <laughs> and he told me that, but he's like, I like the eye, but I like stuff like that. But he means it. It's not, he's not faking. Every move I've had, he, he's helped me. First movie I had, they had taken my eyeballs out. So he was in my house washing dishes. He's like, Jamie, sit down. I, I was using my house washing dishes. With shorts, combat boots, and a shirt on. I was like, I want to say hi to kids. He's like, okay, go say hi to kids and then sit down. So I'm going to go say hi to kids and Jared and all of them on the steps. I said, hey, kids. And they was like, oh, hey, Mr. Tim. Because my eyes were bleeding. <laughs> so they didn't, they didn't appreciate that too much. But, you know. As much as he knows me, as much as he's been in the house with me every time I've moved. He's always been a part of it. If I walk around the house all of a sudden, I say, and I cut it and I start, and I start to start about praising God. Now he would expect it because he went crazy. But I'm walking down the hallway. What you talk about getting some juice? And I should just, I just break it to a, again, he went crazy. I know the pastors that went crazy. Him, David Lewis, and Pastor David, they went crazy. Actually, Pastor Trent went crazy. So the pastor did you. Because I prayed on the prayer call, Pastor Did you? So he's not shocked. He's not surprised. <laughs> what I'm saying is, even if it's a good thing, if I burst out with the wrong, if a, with a good thing at the wrong time, it's a wrong thing. We know that wisdom that lies in the timing of things, right? So it says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, it always does for me, my soul. I got my hallelujah. But if I'm walking down the street doing that, hallelujah, they're going to lock me up. It's going to lock me up. There's a time and a place for everything. I mean, if I want to do it, and God said, don't do it anyway, I'm about to tell you what to do. I, I wasn't allowed like that in Jersey when I was a kid, but I used to do stuff like that. I start praying out loud. I, I, don't mess with me. And I feel like, I, I said, I, I want the enemy, because as a kid, I wanted the enemy to know that there was nothing I was afraid to do. There was nothing I was going to do for God. So I start praying out loud whenever I want to. I say whatever I want to. But then when I, when I think about it now, I think, Who's I really doing it for? Cause I'm, I'm gonna let the enemy think that there's nothing that I won't do for God that I won't do. But if God has not asked you to do it, then you are doing it for you. What fruit is being birthed in? Is my fruit solid and clean and crisp and yummy? And I want yummy fruit. Is my fruit solid, crisp and yummy? Will it serve the nations if I got fruit because of the fact that I was doing it for me? It's still fruit, right? If I start praying in the middle of the street and God does not tell me to do it, to check this out, I still got fruit. But I don't do that, but I walked that street. I had to stop myself a couple times. I was listening to my blog. I was listening to my blog. And I went up for the praise and the praise just hit me. So I thought both my hands went up. I was like, wait, I'm in the street. <laughs> I'm dressing the athletic program in the street and my arms went up. They go all the way up, but they went up. It's an instinct. It's instinctual. As they started to go up, I, I, I pulled them back down. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and I, all that he's done for me, my soul, blah, 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 blah. my soul cries out, don't forget where you are. Because the purpose of me doing it, to, anything like that would be to bring glory to God. 
and it points to other people or point to God for other people. If it points to me, if they're looking at me, calling me crazy, writes any attention in the enemy's camp or in the, in the spirit realm, any attention that's not God focused has the wrong intention and purpose behind it. Right? And some people, that's what they want to kick with Lindsay does not care. She'll do anything. She'll stop, scream. I don't know what she was grinding this morning, but because of the fact that she wants attention so bad, she wants to cause herself, she's getting evicted. She wants attention so bad, she wants to call herself a detention, her family detention, just because her attention, her, her intention, excuse me, is to hurt me. What a low of horse manure. That's baloney. I don't even value myself that much. Get me on a good day, and, and I'm gonna tell you, I, don't, I may not do my hair. <laughs> I meant just too much. It took me like just to even wet it and put cream and, and oil. I do lock, right? The lock method, so it's liquid oil and cream. So even for me to do that, put liquid oil and cream in my hair. This morning it took me an hour and a half. Do you know what I'm dealing with? Some days, no, I do not do my hair. I skip a day. Okay, it's my skip a day day. That's what I call it, my skip a day day. If I won't do my hair every day, why would you be so dire for attention that you would put all your focus and attention towards an intention of getting me riled up so much so that you cause yourself, and here's the part that kills me, your family detention. <laughs> 